Hi, and welcome back to Anton Math. Now, we've been talking about functions, and we talked about functions as relations, and in relations, we talked about inverse relations. And of course, we have a corresponding concept in functions called inverse functions. So, let's go ahead and get started. Just as with normal relations, we can define an inverse relation of a function. If we have this function f from s to t, we can define it define its inverse relation by f inverse, right? We still use this negative 1 power to indicate inverse, uh, from t to s, where f of x equals y implies that f inverse of y equals x. Now, I, I haven't written it out explicitly here, but f inverse is always going to be a relation. We know that f is a relation, and any time that we have a relation, we can take the inverse of that relation, and the inverse will itself be a relation. However, the inverse of a function is not necessarily a function. For it to be a function, it still needs to meet the criteria that we have for a function. In other words, it needs to be well-defined, meaning that in this case, for f inverse to be a function, every element of t needs to appear in an ordered pair where that element of t appears exactly once, right? So let's have an example. Let's say that my function f is defined by f of x equals x squared. Well, notice that I have uh, in f, I have that f of 1 is equal to 1, and f of negative 1 is also equal to 1. Now this is fine for f, right? I'm putting, plugging in 1, I'm plugging in negative 1. It doesn't matter that I'm getting something different out here. We know that that means it's not a 1 to 1 function, but f is still going to be a function here, right? But let's look at f inverse then. If f of 1 equals 1, that means that f inverse of 1 equals 1. And if f of negative 1 equals 1, that means that f inverse of 1 equals negative 1. So here we have two different pairs, right, x, y, but I am repeating a value in my domain and getting different images. This is a violation, right? So we can say that f inverse is not a function. This violates our well-defined property of functions. This is not a well-defined function. I can plug in different values from my domain and I get, or I can plug in the same value from my domain and I get different values in my codomain. So this violates the only distinction we make between a relation and a function. Now f inverse is still a relation, right? f is a relation, so its inverse is a relation, but f inverse is not a function. So how do we know? How do we know that the inverse of a function is still going to be a function? Now as we've seen, it's not always a function, right? Some functions are not invertible into functions in this way. We do have some special criteria that help us out though, and we learned about them in the last video. We have this theorem. If I let f be a function from s to t, then f inverse, the inverse relation of f, is a function from t to s if and only if f is one to one and onto, right? Now this proof isn't too difficult, but um, I'm not gonna, it is a little bit lengthy, I'm not gonna go through it, but this is an if and only if proof. So we know we have to prove two directions. We need to prove this direction and we need to prove this direction, right? So we need to prove that if f inverse is a function from t to s, then f is one to one and onto. That's the first part. And if f is one to one and onto, then f inverse is a function, right? That's the second part. So just to put it kind of vaguely, if we suppose it's not vaguely, but uh, lightly, without too much detail. If we suppose that f inverse from t to s is a function, right? Then that means that f inverse of t equals s it's going to happen exactly once for each t, right? I'm going to have a well-defined image of f inverse for every t and, yeah, for every single t. That's what it means to satisfy the criteria of a function. But if this is true, then that means that f of s equals t covers all of the t's in my codomain, 
right? If m, f inverse is a function from t to s, that means every t in t is being used in some pair ts. So that means every t is used in some pair st, and that's what we need for it to be onto. Now, again, if every if f is a function, which we're given that it is in the theorem, right? We're given right here that f is a function. So that means that every s is being used once, exactly once, no more, no less. And that means that every s here is being used exactly once as well, and it's corresponding to a unique t, right? I'm using every s no more than once, no less than once. I'm using every t no more than once, no less than once. So this is going to be a one-to-one -one correspondence over here in f, so it's one-to-one. -one. As I said, I'm not writing out the details, but we can see that if f inverse is a function, then clearly f must be one-to-one -one and onto. Now coming the other direction, if f is one-to-one -one and onto, that means that f of s equals t. If we're looking at these pairs s, t, then that means that if f is onto, then t appears at least once, right? f onto means that the image of my domain is my codomain. So every t is appearing at least once as an image. Now if f is one to one, that means uh, that every t is occurring at most once, right? No t is corresponding to two different images, or no t is two different images for two different values in my domain. So this says that t at least once in any pair st, and if it's one-to-one, -one, this means that t occurs at most once. In any pair st. So these two together, if t occurs at least once, and t occurs at most once for every t in my codomain, this means that t occurs exactly once. So in other words, when I look at my um, inverse relation now, f inverse, every t in my codomain is going to occur exactly once. So it's going to be well defined. We're not going to have any funny business like we did up here in our counterexample. f inverse is going to be a function. Right? So again, I'm not putting in lots of detail, but this is the idea of the argument. So in general, we're, we're most interested into one and one, one to one and on to um, correspondences of a function to know if it has an inverse. Now on the other side, if we're not sure if a function is one-to-one -one and onto, but we do know that it has an inverse, and we know that that inverse is a function, then we can conclude that our original function was in fact one-to-one -one and onto. So there's this intimate relationship between inverses and one-to-one -one and onto properties that is very useful whenever we need to um, prove some kind of result uh, in either direction. Now in the next video, I'm just going to talk about some of the properties of inverse functions, and that'll finish out our section on functions. We'll see you there.